All right, well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to today, today's webinar um, on how to optimize your Google My Business listing. My name is Katrina Johnson, and I'm the digital manager here at Reputation Sensei. So just to give you a background on us, um, I'll introduce our, today's, our host today after that. We are a full service digital marketing agency located in North Atlanta, and we specialize in helping our clients expand their online footprint, utilizing a reputation, social media, and local SEO strategy. We also handle Legion with paid search and website development. Now to introduce our two hosts, we have Chris Snellgrove, our CEO and founder here at Reputation Sensei, and all the way from Dallas, Texas, Lisa Duty. So welcome, everyone. Hey. Thanks, Katrina. Lisa, have you gotten thawed out yet out there in Texas? We're trying. You know, it's crazy. It is actually 66 right now in Texas, and it's, you know, there's a meme going around. It says, uh, it makes me laugh every time. It says, uh, Challenge me to go from one minus one to 70 in a week and Texas <laughs> says, hold my beer. <laughs> Y'all were not prepared for that, were you? <laughs> we were not. <laughs> crazy, crazy, crazy. So um, while we wait for a few more people, we're just going to go over kind of the, um, let me see, maybe get my PowerPoint started. Okay. Okay, here we go. So today is part of a webinar series. Uh, the series is the 2021 Blueprint to Maximize Your Online Presence. Um, a couple of weeks ago, we did the five-star reputation marketing strategy. Today, we're gonna focus on how to optimize your Google My Business listing uh, to really attract more people, um, you know, increase your website traffic, increase conversions, and ultimately increase revenues. Uh, the next webinar will be on March 18th, uh, Getting Found with Local SEO. And then after that, on April 1st, uh, expanding your brand with social media. And then the last one is, and this is Lisa's favorite, how to drive revenue using your website on April 22nd. I'm looking forward to it. Okay, so um, we're also giving out a bonus at the end. Uh, we'll give you a link to this. This is a PDF, and this really helps you go through um, your current online presence and do an evaluation um, from your website to your Google My Business listing. Uh, to your reputation, to your social media, and even your local SEO. So it really you know, takes you through a series of questions and helps you understand um, you know, where you're at now and uh, helps you create a strategy on how, where, where you want to go. Y'all better make sure and stay around so you can get that link. I'm not sharing it till the end, Chris. <laughs> so today the agenda for the Google My Business listing optimization is first and foremost, we're going to talk about just GMB, by the way, is an acronym for Google My Business. Um, and we're going to talk about the basics. And then we're going to talk about some advanced features. Then we're going to talk about reviews and mentions and why they're important. And then Google My Business Post, Google Post. So let's start out by really uh, taking a step back. And why is this all very important today? Uh, Lisa? Because the fact is, is most people go to Google. That's who they trust when they want to find something. When, it's, when, when Google's a verb, you know it's pretty important. 93% of all internet searches start with Google. Um, and also local, 46% of all searches on Google are seeking local information. So if you own a local business of any sort, that's important. Also, if while we're doing this, if you'll put in the industry in, your, in the chat and what area of the, of the country you're in, that would be great. Just throw that in the chat. Also, put all of your questions in the chat as well, and we'll answer them at the end of uh, the webinar. Yeah, as, as we're going through the webinar today, we're not going to answer questions live, but as your you know questions pop up, go ahead and throw them in the chat, and we will um, actually answer those at the end. But I'd like to see where everybody's. Let's see if I can see the chat. I can't get the chat to pop up. We've got real estate in Orlando, Florida. We have travel sales with Paula. We have Chris from Chicago. He's in healthcare for physicians. Dennis is a web developer in Dallas. Directory Publishing in Atlanta. Love to see all these people coming in. This is amazing. So this is something we call the new norm. And uh, Lisa, you want to take this one? This, this really uh, highlights the importance of having to optimize Google My Business listing. So what it, is direct searches versus discovery searches? Lisa? It absolutely does. So direct searches is when they're actually typing in a business name to find the business and, the, and their GMB listing will pop up, sometimes their website. A discovery searches where they actually type in keywords such as plumber, 
plumber and they act and you're a business's GMB listing services. Discovery searches, direct searches are great. We love that, right? When we know our name, that's that brand awareness. But discovery searches are so important for a GMB listing. I'm really looking forward to the strategies that we share today, how we can help everybody's listings to get discovered more. Because quite frankly, the discovery searches are <laughs> the majority, right? And that's where you better make sure you're maximized in terms of optimization on, on a GMB listing. Absolutely, they are the majority. So how are consumers making buying decisions? Uh, we know today they're looking at, you know, the, the whatever, um, you know, whatever service they're looking for uh, in the area that they're doing it in. Sometimes they'll use the term near me. Um, but the point is, is, you know, having an optimized um, GMB listing and a large number of reviews, frequent reviews is very critical. We covered that a lot in the last webinar, uh, but it really helps your search rankings and helps push you up in the local search results. It, it absolutely does. And it's, it's very powerful. And then in healthcare, you know, uh, there's also a, a search term. Well, you can use the search term in any, um, when you're searching for anything, a car dealer, HVAC, plumber. Um, but what is when you put in the search term best in a, in a local search, what does that do? Lisa? So basically only the businesses that have a four star rating or higher are going to surface in uh, Google maps when they put in the term best. And that's what people are searching for nowadays. They put in the word best. They don't want a mediocre plumber. You see anybody search that? They want the best plumber. Yeah, we, you know, we're in the reputation business and we say four stars is the barometer. You have to be above four stars. If you're not, and we'll show some stats later on that show you can be losing big business um, to a, you know, a higher star competitor. So we'll talk about that at length. <clears throat> Benefits of when you really optimize um, your GMB listing are first and foremost, higher rankings on SERP. What is SERP, Lisa? That's your search engine result pages. And the fact is, is nobody really ever goes to page two. So you're not on page one, guess what? They're not finding you. And when you're optimized, you're gonna see increase in website traffic, um, higher conversions, that means more people converting to cu uh, customers or patients. Uh, really gives you a competitive advantage. And we got an example off to the right and ultimately, this competitive advantage will lead to increased revenues for the practice. Uh, our example over here, uh, I'll let you talk about this, Lisa. Uh, this is the three pack or the local pack, whatever you want to call it. Some people call it the snack pack. I mean, there's all sorts of names for it. Yep. So basically what this is, is we're showing here over here on the right hand side, you can see Dr. Thomas Shaco. He has 315 reviews. His listing is surfacing in the top three for the search allergist in Alpharetta, Georgia. But what I want you to notice also is um, below that, his actual website is also surfacing in search for that query. Now, one thing I really want to get across here and I want people to understand is the more reviews you have, the better your listing is optimized, the more often your listing is going to appear in the local pack. But in fact, when you actually have it optimized really well, it also sends a signal to Google that says this business is legitimate, people trust them. And it also helps your website to show up in organic search, which is what we're seeing right here in this example. And it makes me proud. So, so what you're saying is by having optimized uh, GMB listing and having um, lots of reviews, current reviews, it actually moves up your organic search below the snack pack or the, the three pack. It well, moves it up to the immediate below it. Yes. A lot of times nice. if you're lucky. Nice. So let's, let's jump into the Google My Business basics first. We'll cover that. Um, there's a few factors we look at current NAP. We use a lot of acronyms in, in our business, don't we, Lisa? <laughs> we sure do, don't we? We love those. What, is that, what does that stand for, for correct? That's your name, address, and phone number. And you yep. don't know how often it happens that they'll actually have an old phone number or they've moved locations and they haven't updated their address. Or the, um, or the name's incorrect. The name's not correctly listed uh, as it should be. Yeah, that's powerful too. Also, your website, um, make sure that your web website is listed correctly. Uh, photos, we're going to talk about this in great detail and how important they are. Um, your hours, um, cannot tell you how often uh, we engage a client and their hours are wrong. And there's nothing worse than a customer showing up at your business and you're closed. Or sure. trying to call you on the phone and you're closed too. And they look at your hours and they're like, hey, supposed to be there. Google says they're open right now. Making sure that not only your, your primary category, but your subcategories are listed properly. We see a lot of errors uh, surrounding that. 
Um, now you have appointments or request a quote, or if you're a restaurant, um, reserve a table. Um, reviews and how important they are. Um, and then a description, a good description is vital, is absolutely important. That description should be consistent across all your online profiles, correct, Lisa? It should be consistent. And it's important to have not only a well-crafted description, but actually one that has your keywords in it because Google is gonna use those based on the query the searcher is searching for to determine if your business um, should show up in the local path or not. So perhaps the same description that's on your website should be on your GMB listing. I wouldn't necessarily duplicate the content, but the information needs to be consistent. Okay. okay photos and images. Um, you know, some examples are your company logo, uh, a cover photo uh, that's properly sized, location images, um, any additional photos. You can even do videos now. Video testimonials are, <laughs> we like to do that for our clients, but video testimonials on their GMB listing. Um, and the big reason for all this is that we know that from uh, Bright Local Studies that businesses' photos on their listings receive 42% more requests for driving directions on Google Maps and 35% more click-throughs. So that's a pretty big reason to... Uh, Absolutely. Explain. It's powerful. Also, and this is pretty um, new, this was a study done last year, um, and Bright Local looked at average monthly customer actions by number of images. They found that businesses with more than 100 images on their Google My Business listing gets 520% more calls, 2,700% more directions, 1,000% more website clicks. So um, when we discovered this, we, we said we're going to add a lot more images to our own, right? Lisa? Absolutely. And this is so powerful. And one thing I want to add here is when you're adding these images, I don't want somebody that goes, okay, I only have 25 images. I'm going to go out right now and add 75 images today. That's not what we want you to do. We want you to start adding images gradually, two yep. or three at a time until you build up to these bigger numbers and then consistently add them after that. You can also encourage your, your customers or patients to leave images in the reviews, which will actually show up on your GMB listing. Yeah, that's powerful. And actually, it's great if you have your customers that are visiting your collection, location actually uploading the images versus you uploading them all as the business owner. The last thing is a case study. This is shows the direct correlation between um, having images and posting images on a regular basis and traffic to your GMB site. So you want to talk about this one, Lisa? Absolutely. So this specific GMB listing, GMB listing right here, it had some images on it, but not very many. And then on December 14th, we started posting images regularly, about one every three days. And I want you to notice the spikes with these image views that he was getting. And we actually published the last image on January 11th, but he continued to get views and spikes in those image views um, based on that. So this just shows you right here, this was just a short time frame that we posted some images and how powerful it was. Could you imagine if we did this continually and kept consisting, consistently doing it long term so images more more images lead to more traffic absolutely more visibility more photo views more interactions on your listing nice so now let's get into some of the advanced uh, google my business features uh, we're going to talk about attributes um, uh, services uh, products and under products uh, how important descriptions and images are so uh, attributes, this is something that's been around a while, but has recently been expanded. So you want to talk about this, Lisa? Absolutely. So Google, when COVID started, they started adding all these attributes related to appointment required, mask required, or staff wears masks. The reason this is so important for a business is one, it helps them educate the person that's thinking about coming to them that we are preparing for COVID. We're protecting you, your best interest at heart. But also the fact is, is notice how how this GMB listing pops out because they've added these attributes on the left-hand side. I mean, that's just powerful. And Chris, why we don't show it here, there are actually some other attributes, such as if your facility is wheelchair, wheelchair accessible, if you have an elevator, if you offer free Wi-Fi, there's other attributes you can add on your GMB listing also that'll help your listing to show up even more. Um, one thing I love, and we don't show it on this example, but when you check off online care is available, then it actually in, in mobile, it'll actually put a little like a little van, like your like a mobile. You can kind of see it over here on the right hand side with online appointments, but it actually pops up under your GMB listing in mobile. So it's pretty cool. So I love how that looks. This is a desktop view right here. We're looking at everybody. 
And I think this is so important today because, uh, you know, as a business, you've got to make customers and, and patients feel comfortable with um, coming in to your business and, you know, letting them know that, you know, your staff is wearing masks, that masks are required. Uh, there's temperature checks, all that makes really people feel more comfortable and it's going to lead to uh, more people uh, coming. Yeah. They absolutely. And especially if they're thinking about you or a competitor, who are you going to pick? The one that cares about me and is paying attention to my health and my safety and they're prepared and equipped or the, or the doctor that's not. Right. Let's talk about products uh, underneath your Google My Business listing. So this is my, this is my pride and joy, Chris. I'm really proud of this optimization. So products are really powerful to help a business um, show up more in Google Maps, not only make it visually appealing to the consumer, such as you can see here, but it also is very powerful and it helps Google to understand what your business actually offers. And it uses the words within these products. Um, that's why these descriptions are important that they have keywords with them. You don't want to keyword stuff them. You want it to be, you know, you want to have eat in it or expertise, authoritative and trustworthiness. You want to make it easy for somebody to read, but you want to add these so that Google understands what you're about and you're providing important information to consumer. And notice in the, the image on the far right, it actually has where a learn more button that actually takes the user to that specific page about that product on the website. Absolutely. One thing I love about this also, Chris, is this view you're looking at here is from a, a mobile view of what the products look like. But I want you to notice how it says explore categories. So you can actually add your products in different categories. So you can see here, this one offers them a mortgage calculator, a home evaluation, that kind of thing. So I really like how it visually displays that also on mobile. And when they click in and select a product, what you're seeing on the far right is that actual collection, but you can actually see the other products that were assigned to that category also. It's just so powerful. It looks good. Um, it's important to have great images. Here we actually have custom images that we created for this listing. It doesn't always necessarily need to be a custom image, but it just makes it look so powerful if you take that extra mile and you're going to notice these are all branded for the client with their logo and what they offer also. Would you say this is probably one of the most underutilized um, features of a GMB listing? You don't see this many times, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's underutilized. And if they do add products in there, they'll have a product with no description. Um, it won't be written well. The image is distorted. It doesn't look good. We actually had these created specifically um, sized for the GMB. What I have found um, personally is if you use an Instagram size image, as you can see, that's what we did here with an Instagram. It's like 720 wide by 720 tall. It looks really good and visually appealing both in the in the in, in, minimized in, view and then the expanded view. And Lisa, for a do-it-yourselfer who wants to try to do this themselves, where do they go to actually install this? They do it inside their Google My Business listing. They do it within the GMB dashboard. They simply just literally go over to products and they just click add a product. And um, we don't have a screenshot of that here, but it's really simple. And they can just select an image from their hard drive and then just put their description in there. I do recommend though, a lot more that goes into thought behind that, such as writing your description in advance and a Word doc, typing them up, having them edited, have somebody else look at it, make sure they're compelling. Um, yeah. Even reading them out loud to make sure they make sense where you put them on your GMB. Yep. Okay. Now services, uh... Now, this is kind of curious. Services only pop up on mobile, right? Yeah, right now they're only visible on mobile. Um, I have seen them on desktop in the past, but right now they're only on mobile. Um, one thing that I love about this is if you notice on the phone on the left-hand side, it shows services with like a summary. And then when they actually click to expand in, then you can see expanded services. Um, while Google doesn't actually, um, this information isn't necessarily searchable, like if you search for a word in the actual description, it wouldn't necessarily help the business to show up more often in maps, but it looks really good. It helps the consumer to understand what you do. And the other thing is, is that it helps um, Google more to know about your Google, what you do with your business, even though it might not be indexable per se to get your listing to show up higher, it helps Google understand what you do. Gotcha. It's okay. powerful. So let's move into reviews and mentions. Um, so in the chat box, if you'll just pick uh, which which um, pediatrician would you pick on this? Uh, Dr. Thomas on the left has a 5.0. Uh, Roswell Pediatric Center has a 4.9. So which one of these would you select? 
type in the chat for us and let us know yeah, what you think. Dr. Dr. Thomas or Roswell Pediatric Center. And I think you can see the chat, right, Lisa? I sure can. I can see Catherine says she's going to Roswell. K Kim Starr is going to go to Roswell. Looks like everybody's picking Roswell. And Paula mentions the fact it's because they have the high reviews. That's why yeah. she would pick them. And that is the exact point here. Um, you know, a five-star rating, it doesn't carry as much weight if you don't have a lot of Google reviews. Only four, four Google reviews doesn't exactly communicate trust. And um, so 330 Google reviews. Uh, especially if they're recent, is communicating more trust and is actually going to have more uh, people choose this business. So that is the absolute correct answer. Uh, well, you know, one thing I think about that I wanted to add here, Chris, really quickly is four reviews. It's easy to get four reviews, right? Yeah. I mean, you can have your buddies do that, but you know, it's, you can't have 330 buddies give you reviews. Right. Where to Roswell? Something to think about. Yep. And so in the beginning, uh, people only talked, you know, really people only cared about the rating. And then as we kind of got, you know, um, internet marketing and, and more and more people went online, uh, they started looking at other things than just the rating. They looked at the quantity of reviews uh, that your business has. They looked at the content. They're actually reading what people are saying about the experience that they've had with your business. Um, they're looking at, is the company responding to the reviews? This is a big one and very important that you as a company respond to your online reviews. If someone takes the time to write you a review, um, it's our opinion that you should take the time to thank them. Um, and, and then of course the negatives, you wanna deal with those. Uh, and that's a whole nother conversation. And then frequency and recency. And this is one of the most vital and most important. And this is how often your business is getting reviews. In a study done by Bright Local last year, they asked the participants, how recent does an online review need to be to impact your decision? 40% um, of the people said within a two week period, 30% of the people said within 30 days. So you add those together, 70% of the respondents only care about reviews that were written in the last 30 days. So that's why it's so vital that you're getting online reviews written by your current customers on a regular basis. It's not just about a one-time fix it and forget it. People make the mistake of doing that a lot. Yep. And something I want to add here really quickly, Chris, is, is if you're not getting reviews on a regular basis, then Google is also not going to trust your business. So it's also about the consumer and about Google actually trusting your business. Yep. Um, we talked about this earlier, like how important it is to have four stars or more. Um, if you're in the four star range, 92% of the people will trust your business and do business with you. If you drop down into the three-star range, you could have a 3.9 and be losing 35% um, business to a four-star competitor. So that's why whenever we engage a client, we've got to get them up and over four stars immediately. And the closer to five, the better, but no one expects a perfect business. Uh, if you're in the two-star range, um, you know, that's that's a, a, a death rattle for a business. And we recommend, you know, taking immediate action. Uh, we often say if you don't have a process in place to generate good uh, reviews, uh, the only time you're going to get them is when people are upset because people are quite frankly more motivated to write a negative review than uh, a positive review. You have that's, to work a little, you have to work a little harder to get those positive reviews. That's true. That's absolutely true. I know that's when I think to write a review. I hate to admit it, but when they tick yeah. me off. <laughs> the other big reason to have reviews is this is you know something that's new uh, or relatively new. Uh, for years, there's been an ask a question button on every GMB listing. Every Google My Business listing has ask a question. But recently, Google changed something. And now they are uh, answering the reviews, um, excuse me, answering the questions with your current reviews. And we can take a look at that. So let's just go to, we're going to go ask a question to this business. This is RS Andrews. They are a plumbing contractor. Now you can post that question, you can ask a question and post it, but then the business has to get an email. Well, not many people are gonna wait to, to hear a response from that business. That business may or not respond, but look at this speed of service. Look who's answering in real time. The reviews are actually, you know, Google's using AI to answer these questions in real time. And this That's is so powerful. So powerful. So, you know, we, we say this is a big reason to make sure that you have lots of reviews, lots of positive reviews about things such as speed of service, because that's what people are looking for, answering these questions. Mentions are something else. Uh, mentions are showing up in search results. So uh, often, again, when people put in best, uh, the, the search term best, uh, a mention will actually pop up in the local search result. So 
I think they meant undoubtedly the best, but they put undoubtedly the best. Mm -hmm. I'll just, um, but you can see how that pops up. And then the mentions are also below the Google My or actually inside the GMB listing. So you can see the mentions are here. The best, yeah. best of the best, best of best of class. So mentions are very important. Um, another industry, let's talk about the attorneys. This is an example of another type of mention in relation to words. So here's a search for probate litigation. And you can see that the searches for probate, well, Google realized that probate related to estate planning. And so this review had talked about estate planning. So it helped this GMB listing to surface because of that. Um, on the right hand side, we have an example here of why it's important to also have the information on your website in addition to your GMB listing. You can see here that this, GM, this business came up because their website mentions a state litigation. And then there's another one below it where they mention their website mentions probate litigation, uh, the Lucha Evans Law listing at the bottom. So not only is important that you have these mentions within your website, and, but you have them within your GMB listing and it's gonna help your business to show up more and get more traffic and improve your visibility. One other thing I wanted to mention here is semantic search. And so for example, this search was for probate litigation, but you can see it brought up the ones that mentioned estate and probate both as the, as the example businesses because that Google is smart enough to realize semantic search. So keep that in mind when you're writing the content for your GMB listings and even for your website that you don't necessarily have to keyword stuff nowadays. And how do you get more mentions? More reviews, right? That's right. More <laughs> mentions, more reviews. That's absolutely so we, right. So we've talked a lot about why it's important to, have, to get reviews. Uh, if you're interested in generating reviews, we covered that in great detail with some different techniques in the last webinar. So yep. if you're interested in seeing a replay of that, uh, that was the five-star reputation marketing blueprint. Um, just put in the chat box that you would like a link sent to you and we'll send you a link to that webinar. But that webinar, we detailed how to generate more reviews in a, in a multitude of ways from your customers or patients. Yeah, and it's powerful too. So if y'all didn't get a 10, y'all need to make sure and get the access. Okay, Google post. Um, so let's talk about this, Lisa. Why are Google posts so powerful today? My goodness. Well, there's so many reasons they're powerful. One thing I love about Google Posts is it helps the consumer to know what you're doing, what kind of offers you have, if you have a special event going on. But also it helps Google to understand what you're doing and it helps your business to appear more often in search. Um, putting up Google My Business Post is an easy way to make sure Google knows this company pays attention to their listing and they're paying attention and they care about what they're doing. And you can, you can put a Google post on what's new, something brand new for your business. If you're having an event, a special offer, or even just highlight a product. Uh, it's important when you uh, put a Google post to have a call to action. Uh, you don't want to just be posting content for the sake of posting content. You want it to have a call to action. So learn more, sign up, get the offer. You know, there, there's many different calls to action. Um, it's now. also a great way to build links to your website, authoritative links, because Google is also obviously going to trust Google. So if you use a learn more option and drive them to say a blog post for the user to get more information, then it's going to help you in that way too. So here's some examples. Uh, this is one that was done uh, for us recently. What is reputation management? Um, that learn more will take you directly to that recent blog uh, on our website. Uh, here's one for a doctor. We're open and seeing medicines, excuse me, patients by telemedicine only. Call now. That was during the pandemic last year. Uh, here's one for home services or home solutions. Uh, better to buy a home or sell your home fast. Again, you'll see a call now. Learn more on every one of these. And this for Chaco allergy. There's one on uh, peanut allergies. Um, but, you know, how do people execute these and how hard are they to execute? Please. They're pretty simple. So within the business's GMB dashboard, you literally go over to post and you click add post. You select the type of post that you want to add. You, you select your image for it. You put your content in there and you put your button in. Pretty simple. It takes about, less than I would say, if you already have all your content written and everything, it takes less than five minutes to put up a GMB post. Um, so it's pretty quick and it's, and it's powerful for how much time you're going to spend doing it.
And when you put when, when you put your button in there, learn more, you're actually, they ask you for a URL. So you just go grab the URL wherever you want them to, um, that, that person to go, usually to your website. That's right. You don't always have to take them to your blog post. You can take them to your appointment page, for example. This is really highlighting, uh, that again, there's a direct correlation between hosting, doing Google Post, and increased visibility. So you want to talk about this, Lisa? Absolutely. So this was a little case, another little case study that we did. Um, so we published um, GMB Post. We started with publishing them sporadically about once every week and a half. And then in December, we moved to publishing one every week on the same day. And what I want you to notice is his map views and his listings in search results, that's actually for his actual GMB listing, increased um, the more often we publish. So if you look before um, December, he was still getting map views, but I want you to notice that the, the valleys, they would almost bottom out and then he would peak back up when something published. But what I want you to notice is we started publishing every week. The, the valleys were not as low anymore, except of course, during the Christmas week, that one that really hits the bottom is, it was literally like December 28th. But I want you to notice now his map views and his search views were going up and they were staying up higher. And this is just a short study of looking at this publishing GMB post and how powerful it can be. Um, one thing that I didn't mention earlier that's really important about GMB post is it also can help your um, if you want to rank for something specific and your GMB listing is not showing up for it, if you're publishing that kind of content with actually within your GMB listing through GMB post, then you'll start surfacing for those queries too. Nice. Um, now, and how long did the GMB post last? They do have a, a, a expiration. So it used to be they were really only visible for seven days, and that's really about how long they really stay pushed out there in the feed. But now people can actually click a view and just keep scrolling through and even seeing your older posts. So that's really powerful. That's something that Google has changed recently. Um, with events and offers, when you put dates on those, those actually stay up until that date passes. Nice. So you can put up an offer for a month even, you know, such as, um, your free report, for example, Chris, that you have that we're going to show later, we could literally put up a GMB post um, with that as an offer and then drive people to the website to claim that offer for a long period of time. I normally recommend you put them up for about a month and then you change okay. it out and refresh it. Very nice. So the point is, is they're not hard to do. They're, 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 you, know, you get in there and it takes less than really five minutes to execute one, uh, but they're pretty important to helping you increase your visibility um, and traffic to your GMB listing and, 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 your, and your, your ranking. It really determines where you rank. Yeah, it, it definitely helped this, this specific client here. Google loves content, right? They do, they love content. And it's also important, I mentioned EAT earlier, expertise, authoritativeness, and trustworthiness. Um, having this um, high value content within your GMB listing and on your website, they work together really well to help your um, business show up higher in maps and in organic search. Okay. I think we're almost to the Q and A. Um, right before we get the Q and A, um, just to re refresh you, we um, between Reputation at Sensei and Rocks Digital, we do the following services: complete website development, reputation marketing. That's our specialty. Uh, social media marketing, Google paid search, search engine optimization, um, and local SEO on page and off page. Uh, really, Lisa really specializes in website development. Google paid search and real SEO, sort of search engine optimization. I love how you say real SEO. <laughs> <laughs> I love that because so many people, Chris, they'll say that they actually do SEO, even when they're building a website, they're like, oh, well, we built, we do SEO and we're building your site. Well, the fact is, is they really don't. I mean, they'll have a title tag assigned to your phone number on your website. How is that SEO valuable for you? If you want a beautiful example of some of her recent work, just go to reputationsensei.com. She just rebuilt our website and maximized it for um, really search. So thank you, Lisa. Okay, thank now we're going to Q and A. So um, here's our two websites. And Katrina, what what questions do we have? Okay, so um, starting from the top, uh, Catherine asks. Um, that they had an issue with their Google My Business page being hacked and um, it was changed to an auto garage across town. Uh, she'd like to know what is the best way to correct this? We're having a lot of trouble getting Google to return our calls or emails. Please. You want me to take it, Chris? Yes. Okay, so so first thing is, is this is the perfect example of why 
that it's very important that you continually are monitoring and updating your listing and that whatever email address the notifications go to about your GMB listing, that it's an email address that you're actually monitoring. Because most likely when they put in the request to claim that listing, because that it wasn't responded to, that ownership just automatically transferred to them. So at this point, what you're going to have to do to get your GMB listing back is you're going to have to go in and try to claim it yourself. I know you said Google's not responding to phone calls. That's absolutely the case. You're just going to have to keep trying them to take ownership of that listing back. So and you can do a postcard verification or a phone call to your business. So you can go in there and request ownership by that. Right. Um, yeah, you can actually. But if they've actually claimed the listing, um, most likely they've updated the email addresses attached to that. And so you're just going to have to keep after it. it. It might be, I don't know how many reviews on the listing that you might have to start over. I hate to say it, but. Or, or hire someone to help you with it because we do have, we do deal with that on a regular basis. Absolutely. Get somebody that does it on a regular basis to take care of it. And I hate to say that, but it's just, yeah, otherwise you can spin your wheels trying to claim it back. Yep. And sometimes Google will respond to agencies more um, likely than a, a consumer just because agencies spend money with Google. Hope that answers that. I know it's not the best answer, but um, that's a tough one. Okay, um, so the next question is from Mike. Um, he says, we mentioned having customer post images on our uh, Google My Business site. How does a doctor protect themselves from the risk of HIPAA issues on posting pictures? Great question. You know, we deal with a lot of uh, healthcare clients and uh, you have to have a model release um, if you're going to publish their picture on your website or your GMB listing or even social media. You need to get a model release um, or don't publish them. Um, simply, you know, taking pictures of um, your patients and, and uploading them is a, it can be a direct violation of HIPAA. So um, we recommend if you're going to do that, um, you just get a signed model release. Now, if the client uploads the image himself, though, Chris. That's right. If they do it like, like within a, a review, if they're writing a Google review and they upload it, that's fine. It'll actually populate and show up on the GMB listing. And it's completely fine to do that. You don't have to worry about a HIPAA violation because they're the one that's actually uploading that image himself. The end user uh, uploaded it. Okay. Um. I'm going to go to jump to Catherine because it's a, about the same question. Uh, Catherine asked, what kind of release? Can you spell that motto release? I think well, she's yeah. asking. You know what? We can send her a copy. If you if you want a motto release, um, just request it and we can send you a copy of one. And it's it's pretty standard, um, but it's, you know, it's you just put your name on it and get your patients to sign it. Um, some of our clients like to tell, uh, they, they'll do video testimonials. Uh, if, they, if their patients don't feel comfortable with a video, uh, they'll do a story and take a picture of that patient and then tell that patient's story about, you know, their care and, and, and how the, the doctor helped them solve their problem uh, or issue. Um, so this, these model releases are pretty standard, but we can send you one, Catherine. Perfect. Catherine, I'll send that to you. Okay, so our next question is from Paula. Is it okay to incent um, people to leave Google reviews for a gift? Absolutely not. That uh, that actually violates the terms of service, um, um, this um, terms and conditions of any public review site. Um, so we do not recommend incentivizing. Uh, there was actually an attorney's office in, I believe, Tennessee that got in trouble for incentivizing um, their client their clients uh, to leave reviews on Google, and Google actually took this uh, attorney's office off of Google. So they were blacklisted. So it's a, it's a strictly a no no. You have to be very careful. Okay. Um, the next two questions are about the Google My Business um, mentions. So Paula asks, where do these mentions come from? And Dennis asks, do the mentions come from reviews and are they different? There are di many different kinds of mentions. I'm sorry, Chris, I hope you don't mind me taking this one. Okay. I love talk. I love talking about mentions. So there are several different kinds of mentions. A lot of times, yes, they pull that information out from the review. There are other types of mentions which tie to your website that also help your business surface, such as that example I gave you with probate um, litigation in McKinney. Um, the Lucia Evans Law listing was showing up. 
um, in the in maps because that they had Colgate litigation on their website. So there are different kinds of mentions. Um, they pull them from reviews. They pull them from the stuff that's actually on your website that backs up what your GMB listing says. So they come from different places. Yep. Katrina. Katrina, I think we lost your audio. Oh, sorry. Um, Dennis also asked, how long do the posts stay up? Um, I believe this is for the Google My Business listing as well. Um, well, Google has always said that they stay up for seven days, um, but they're actually now, they've just changed it so people can scroll back to your older posts too. And I have found, um, even before Google changed it so that they show up longer, I have found that um, I continually get views on older Google My Business posts, like the numbers actually continue to go up and climb um, even afterwards. And Chris is bringing you up an example here of what they look like. And you can literally mm -hmm. click that arrow and just keep scrolling across and you'll just keep seeing them. Um, and you can even get to the end where it says view all and you can even view the older GMB post and just keep going down the line. And I want you to notice why Chris is scrolling here through these. They're all different kinds of images and visuals, videos, graphics, stats. These things are so powerful and it's important that you have really good visuals along with them. Testimonials. <laughs> Testimonial videos, no. different kinds of content, all different kinds of content on there. Okay. All right. Dennis asks, um, does Google look at embedded metadata in photos? Yes, absolutely. I didn't mention XF data optimization in the webinar today because I didn't want to get too, too way too geeky on it. But yes, absolutely. Um, any of the images that we upload to a client's GMB listing, we actually add all the XF data in the background, which is the keywords, the business address, that kind of thing, because all of those send signals to Google in relation to where the business is in relation to the query to help them service. Is that Dennis that answered that or asked that? Yes, yes Dennis. it was. You must have a high level understanding because we, we try not to go too technical, but yes, that is the proper way to do it is to add that uh, before you add the images. Yeah. Dennis is a web developer <laughs> here in Dallas. I know him quite well. He knows his stuff. Okay, so Michelle asks, how do you feature social media accounts on your Google My Business? Oh, let's see, let me just go back here. Uh, let's back up. Oops. So I think her, her question is, how do you feature um, them across the bottom? Like here, is that the, is that the question? Yes, I think I, I believe that's what she's referring to. How do you feature social media accounts on the Google My Business? So in your GMB dashboard, there is a place to list the URLs for your social media profiles. So you just have to go into the back end and drop those URLs for your direct um, accounts and they will populate. Them. Also, while we mentioned that, just throwing it out there, one thing I didn't mention earlier is Google actually looks at your different social media profiles and uses that as a trust signal to determine your, your, the real the trust in your business and if it's eligible for different keyword queries also. That's why it's important to have a consistent social media presence across the board, not just on Google and on your website. It's really SEO juice, right? The more social content you put out. It is, it absolutely is. It's very powerful. Okay. So the Mike, Mike asks, you mentioned having customer post images on your Google My Business site. How does a doctor protect themselves from the risk of HIPAA? I think we, we addressed that. We answer this one. Um, I do want to mention that some people do upload images. Sometimes they're not relevant to that business or maybe be in, uh, inappropriate. You can flag that and request that Google removes it. Uh, you cannot remove a, uh, a, a consumer or patient's um, uploaded image yourself, but you can ask Google to do it. Yeah, and you need to monitor your images. There's actually an example of a uh, bed, bath, and beyond where somebody had arranged their hand towels to, smell the, to spell the word uh, fart <laughs> on the listings. Forgive me for saying that, but that's really what they did. And they posted it to the bed, bath, and beyond's GMB listing. And so you've got to monitor your listing. 
and see what people are doing and flag those images. Yeah, we, we, we've seen some pretty vulgar reviews on uh, companies GMB listings that could have absolutely been removed with a simple request uh, from that company that owned that GMB listing that said, hey, this this you know review uh, violates the terms of service. You're not allowed to use um, you know dirty words and and, and certain uh, anything that's slang or really um, racist. Uh, all of that would get removed. Uh, if that company simply requested that. So it is so vital that you monitor uh, all your reviews and your photos that are on your GMB list. It, it's not just a one time create a listing and you're done with it. Right. It just, it doesn't work that way. Right. Sorry for the repeat question there, guys. Mm -hmm. um, okay, so the next question is from Chris. He asks, how do you get mentions or recommendations for businesses where clients might want to be anonymous, like those working with a therapist? So those are tricky. <clears throat> Therapists, first and foremost, cannot ask their clients. It has to be completely organic. Uh, they cannot they can send a review request. Uh, in fact, they can't request a review from their current patients. They can re request um, uh, reviews from their former patients, uh, but that's a very tricky one. Uh, that's a tough one to generate reviews for. Um, not a lot of people are going to jump on Google and, and, and talk about their, you know, their, their, them seeing a therapist or even going to sometimes med spas can be a little challenging because uh, a lot of people like to remain anonymous. So we have to work a little harder for med spas to get the, the reviews for them. But not everyone uh, uh, um, Gmail account has their real name attached to it. They'll, they'll have a, a pseudonym or, or, or some type of, um, you know, fictitious name. So that does help. Okay, um, Mike asks, do you have any statistics on the increase of business for healthcare practice based upon having an effective uh, Google, I'm, I'm sorry, BMG site versus using more traditional marketing efforts? It seems that uh, working at Google My Business site may be very tedious. The rules with Google change all the time and it is probably worse to not keep things up. So at the point, is it worth going through, going in this direction? What data might you have that would justify the effort? We can send you some case studies <clears throat> on what, uh, on some specific examples of when you optimize, when you put an effective reputation marketing strategy in place, generate reviews, use those reviews in your marketing. Uh, we do have some specific case studies, but sometimes doing it on your own can be challenging. And that's why companies uh, every day hire Lisa and my company to help them with that because there is a lot of moving parts. You're absolutely right. Google changes the, the game uh, almost on a monthly basis. So, Chris, we, is it okay with you if I share the link yeah. to the healthcare case study on your website? Yes, absolutely. Please do. You can throw it in the chat. Yep, I'm throwing it in there right now. Okay, and then lastly, and if I missed anyone's question, please drop it in the chat and let me know. But lastly, I have Catherine. Um, she asks, what is your best advice for increasing the quantity of reviews? Having a process in place that involves people, technology, and um, uh, really process people um, and, and technology. You've got to you've got to have conversations with your customers or patients as they're leaving. Um, you got to hand out. We recommend handing out a review card. We recommend having uh, review signs in your practice that make it give people an easy path. And we also recommend technology, sending them a text and an email after the visit uh, in, a, in a sequence. Uh, you just can't ask them once. Um, with our system, we ask them uh, the same day, we give them a text, an email, three days later, we send them a follow-up email, and a week later, we send them a final email. And sometimes it takes two or three asks to get a, a review. So we have to, you, you typically have to work a little harder to get the positive reviews. But at the same time, you don't wanna over-survey, so we recommend not asking that same customer or patient, uh, probably for a six month period. So you wanna make sure you're not you know, banging on them every time. Uh, a lot of car dealers are, are notorious for it. Every time you go get your car serviced, you know, if it's on a quarterly basis, you're getting that constant barrage of, hey, will you write us a review? Will you write us a review? And you don't wanna turn a negative into a, or excuse me, a positive into a negative. I wanted to share with Mike real quickly here that you actually just had a blog published uh, earlier this week, Chris, I, if you, about reviews and impacting your visibility in Google Maps. I think that might be important for Mike to understand in relation to 
um, if he wants to uh, have a GMB or not. So I'm dropping that in there for them. I just yeah. dropped that in for anybody that's interested in that. Um, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I just dropped the link in for them so okay. they could have that. And then if you'll also drop in the link for the bonus, this is the PDF that expanding your business online, um, uh, online okay. presence 2021. This is the self-assessment that really helps you go through each different part of the, the um, online presence from your website to your GMB listing, to your reputation, your local SEO footprint, and your social media. I dropped it in just now, and okay. this is really powerful. Um, also, Chris, if they don't want to do the self-assessment themselves, you have an amazing online presence report on your website, which will they can put their information in and get that report too. You want me to go ahead and share that? Yep. yep. If you want to put it in the chat and then under resources on our website, we have a couple of different resources. We have a HIPAA compliant guide. If you want a, a guide to responding to reviews in a HIPAA compliant manner, that's a that's an important one. A lot of people like that in healthcare space. And then we have the one that you're talking about right here, online presence report. You go down, <clears throat> you type in your business here as it appears on Google and you can get your report. And it really gives you an accurate snapshot of how people are seeing your business online in terms of reputation, local SEO, social media, even the website um, uh, grade. So it breaks it down. It's powerful. This has been a really fun day. I've really enjoyed all these questions. I don't know about you, Chris, but it's been, yep. I think it's been good. Yep. Awesome. Well, we look forward to uh, seeing everyone next time. Thank you for attending and everyone have a great day. Thank you, Lisa. Thanks, Katrina. I've dropped the link in for the next webinar, which is on March 18th. If anybody would like to click that now and go register, um, it'll take you to the Zoom and you can register and we'll see you then.